Good afternoon, assalamu alaikum. Um, I will be I'm honored, in fact, to stand here in front of all of you to present the SAY group. Um, 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 actually, my presentation should have been followed by a um, small uh, introduction about what are the SDGs, uh, but I'm trying um, to be as brief as possible. I am usually a big talker, so I'm going to try to keep it very short. <laughs> So uh, we're talking, um, I'm, I'm going to show you just a small presentation about what we do as a group. Um, so the group have been founded almost uh, 50 years ago, uh, operating uh, mainly in agriculture, manufacturing services, um, trading, retail, and recently in agriculture um, big time. Um, I have put some of, uh, some of uh, the companies uh, that are part of the group who are mainly involved in what we are going to talk about today. Um, so next, yeah. Um, so you, many of you might know the little small um, companies within the Yagub group, but never um, within the umbrella of the Yagub group. But recently we have been joining that effort um, to really um, operate under the umbrella of the Yagub group uh, and really joining the international uh, of, uh, efforts of sustainable development, uh, the international standards, and also the and to try to embed these these standards within our operational model nationally. Uh, so for that, we have uh, reformed ourselves recently within the past two years. Uh, back, yeah, within the past uh, two years, um, to really focus on some of uh, of the SDGs. Um, as we are talking sustainability and we're talking sustainable development, obviously not any organization can operate in all of them. Uh, but for us, it was also a very new idea and ideology to really say, okay, we are going to operate in these uh, particular um, goals because that's what we believe in. Um, we, in fact, um, the way we came to, to know that, uh, well, we want to focus on these, uh, is that we embedded the SDGs into our operational model. Um, this explained in a way that uh, we, we saw what we are doing, um, so how can we change what we are already doing and have expertise in uh, to really incorporate that into the standards that we expected from us and how ca do we have responsibility over what we already do. So not to really, uh, so not to carry it in our back uh, and say, well, we cannot or we can approach this, but mainly just let's move within it. So we have chosen um, some of these uh, goals um, as we already operating in them. Um, hunger, nutrition, uh, poverty, e gender equality, recently education, but not that much. Uh, but mainly as our area of expertise is um, industrialization and working within to develop, um, um, I mean, uh, to have a common goal for all of us, to have our partner, those who work in the community that we work on, we all move towards the same goal. And so we focus a lot on, uh, on 17 um, and 9 and 8. These are our really main major, um, major goals. Next, because I already explained that. Next, yeah. So I'm just gonna walk very quickly through the different companies and what we do. It's also a very good uh, platform for branding. And uh, so we have Afritech. The Afritech has been trading in um, in Arigam, uh, mainly processed and unprocessed, uh, semi-processed, uh, that is eventually um, are exported or used uh, nationally. Um, we are, however, following the international standards uh, in that, and we are also now working on the supply chain at large to see how we could, what are the benefits of Arabic gum, as you can see, the, you know, there is a huge revolution about uh, um, the use of Arabic gum in almost every single product we use today, so if you walk into the supermarket, um, you find every single product has Arabic gum. But you would not know, they would not try that because they still use it as a code. So we as a Sudanese, what can we do with this supply chain in the future? So at the moment, we're only working on research and hopefully 
in five years from now, we'll be standing here presenting to you a new model. Next. Samil, I'm going to be a bit biased here, that's my baby. <laughs> um, so it was established in 2011. Um, it's a factory that produces ready-to-use therapeutic foods uh, for children suffering from malnutrition uh, with uh, creating solution uh, for them that uh, can treat the child from severely malnourishment to um, a normal child. We've been doing this working closely with uh, mainly the UN agencies, UNICEF and WFP, um, and a set of other INGOs um, in which they are um, they're working closely with us to bring these products to the end uh, kids. So in here we're really working on um, so zero hunger um, and good health for, um, for the children, but also gender equality because, um, and this is very interesting to, to, um, to introduce that, through our, one of our school feedings. So at the moment, we are working on a product um, to, um, to school children, and we realize that many kids, just a few kilometers from Khartoum, particularly females, are not going to school after a certain age because they either, um, um, parents do not really um, believe in education, um, or um, they they rather go work, and so um, this the school meal has been really an, a very strong approach to keep kids at school, when for attendance points, but also to uh, bring a lot of also girls to school, um, because uh, I mean it's one meal less for the mom if she stayed home, um, from that point of view. And then um, we have Darfut. I am going to be very brief here because um, I'm presenting a case that is quite um, elaborating on the, on the Darfut project. But Darfut is a company that we have opened recently, 2017. It was inaugurated. It is started in 2015 as a dream as, and as a project on paper that uh, many of people who have read the pages did not really believe that this could be true, which is basically to establish a uh, processing line for peanuts in Darfur, in one of the Darfur states. Uh, the choice have landed in Adain, finally, as being a strategic location, but also as, um, um, as an area that we knew, as a group we knew quite well, and um, we felt confident enough to uh, to start uh, the factory there. Um, just back. <laughs> it is quite huge. Uh, it pro it produces up to 26,000 metric ton per annual year, which is six months, because we are planting seasonally. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So we'll talk more about our food in, in a bit. Um, now, since we have been working, since working, um, since Samil has been established and, uh, and also their food recently, um, and we, we enter into the process of, um, um, of um, uh, peanuts, um, we have come up with B to C uh, product finally, <laughs> uh, which is called Gamerna. Um, I advise any of you today to go to the supermarkets and try it because it's quite different. <laughs> than every other that's why you will try. Uh, Gamerna is a peanut paste product uh, that was uh, initiated or established 2017 um, as uh, working further with the uh, peanut uh, processing and try to innovate more uh, peanut related products. Um, I think what is really important to our topic today that um, uh, the peanut, the dakwa is fully produced by women, fully. Like it's, um, I think they have three or four males working in that entire company. So, um, and it's also, um, it's uh, one of its more idea, um, um, one of the message they constantly trying to, uh, to send with uh, Gamerna that it's um, peanuts usually, I don't know if you, many of you have, has an, a toxin called aflatoxin, um, which is, um, well, a human con for human consumption, there is a particular range and almost 80 to 90 something percent of the peanuts on the street that we consume today is affected by aflatoxin. So Gamerna have really managed to bring out aflatoxin free peanuts, which is also by sending some health messages that we need to be aware 
about the peanuts that we consume and we still could consume our uh, normal products um, uh, I, I mean our traditional product in an um, a bit more sophisticated way clean and 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 um, and hygienic next and then finally um, and Nikhil um, so um, again uh, the um, Say Group has uh, been a partner in Luli previously. Uh, and I think we all know Luli very well because we, we all eat Luli sausages. Uh, so Nikhil is coming um, as a successor of that uh, to, um, to bring, um, to really work on the supply chain of, um, of uh, poultry in Sudan um, and to be able to provide us with, um, with meat um, that it's, um, that instead of S exporting cattle now we need to export meat it's finally it's about time that we start um, thinking about the value change of meat in Sudan uh, the project it's uh, in partnership with two uh, other companies in Sudan uh, with Hajar and um, and um, Bank of Khartoum and I think for a very long time we we start not having um, this type of partnership and it's good to see that we also working on multiple or multiple level with other private sector to all, um, I, I mean, to bring the strengths of each party. Um, the product is it's expected to start in 2020, and I will be talking a bit uh, about it in the, towards the end of this presentation. Next. Yeah. Now is my presentation starting. <laughs> um, so I'm going to very shortly again speak about uh, the mechanized agriculture project. And this is a case study that I will be presenting to you. Um, and just to show you that how we have really worked on the value change. Um, as I explained uh, recently, we, stab we established um, Samil in 2017, and Samil is producing a product that is based on peanuts. Uh, but because it's a franchisee of a French company, um, it's, uh, th uh, the quality of the product has to be really in compliance with the same quality as the European uh, or as a standard of the franchisee which is, is located in France. So uh, when we first came to produce the, the products, we could not find peanuts that is adhering to the, to the standard um, of the product, which is we had it to import peanut. Um, and that was like a really big um, a hit in the back for a Sudanese to do that. Um, so we start immediately working on the supply chain of peanut. Uh, two years in the beginning, uh, we were working in, uh, in um, Al Jazeera with some uh, farmers in Al Jazeera, and soon enough, we took the project to the next level, and we realized is that if we, could, if we really want to do and have an impact about peanut uh, 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 supply chain, we need to really be in where the peanuts are. So, and the peanuts are mainly planted in the Darfurian area, or Darfur states and Kurdufan. Um, so uh, the choice came to having a project there and, um, and the vision of it was really to develop the peanut sector and to increase the production of groundnuts. These were the two major, um, major um, uh, goals that we had. How we wanted, and this is mainly, next. And this is mainly to supply, uh, to, to go down to just the explanation I did. There was a demand. There is a, pro, uh, there is, um, uh, a company that could produce the peanuts in, in Adan. And there is a huge need for it. And so we need to work all together with, uh, with, uh, with the farmers. So in order to see and to test this, um, this project, we had a pilot in 2016 with some farmers. And we worked with six farmers to, to, s uh, to introduce a new conception or a new way of planting peanuts. Well, as we all know, since 2000, I mean, since uh, the Darfur in, uh, or the Irrest in Darfur, we really have a huge issue with finding a labor. Now, people are not planting in this, uh, in the huge land uh, because of the lack of labor. And so we had to find a solution. Um, to um, to increase productivity. Now, obviously, the only way forward to mechanize, and we took that challenge and introduced new mechanical far introduced mechanical farming in Darfur. So, um, with these five farmers, um, with the six farmers, just one, one 
with the six farmers we started, we, where the Yagub group have, fi have fully um, took care of, um, of the planting, um, uh, the machineries, uh, the running of the project, and it was really is easy deal with them. Well, in the beginning, it's very hard to, to it was very hard to convince the farmers. So we told them, you guys are planting, plant your own way. We will take part of your land, plant it in a mechanized way because they have never seen or have never farmed uh, in a mechanized form. And of course, um, I mean, to listen to someone that tell you, okay, it's, you need to change um, your way of operation doesn't go as easy. So we needed to show them. And soon after, uh, the next year, uh, that, uh, that land that we farmed uh, with this farmer has become a touristic area. Everyone wanted to see how the, the, the peanuts were, were aligned, and I will show you some pictures um, uh, that align, and well, this they have never seen before. Huh? Um, now, the idea behind the project was really to empower um, the farmers, because uh, for us, we needed the peanut. We need good quality peanuts for our entire supply chain, but we also understand if, if we want the best final product, we also need to start from the root. Um, and starting from the roots means starting from where the peanuts are planted. So uh, we had a partnership with the farmers, um, and uh, we, know two, we knew three things, that we needed to empower them, to support them, and, um, and, um, and we all need to benefit, okay? Because otherwise you will not be in. So we had, uh, uh, this is how the, p the, um, the project stakeholders look like. So we, ha we, l we worked with local communities, so we did not invest in our own land. Uh, in fact, we worked with the land of, uh, of the farmers. Um, farmers also lack finance, obviously, that was the main reason, the second main reason other than labor is the finance and where the group have supported um, the farmers to, uh, to link them with financier, which is we link them with some uh, fina uh, with commercial banks. And then, um, and then the comp and we also guarantee them, of course, the buying of the product because at last we wanted the product. And, and so for them was a win-win situation. So you have a pro you have uh, uh, the equipment, you have the finance here, uh, the finance for it, and uh, you have a market. So a better dream could not have happened to these farmers. Um, also, we're trying to work with some INGOs to support the, the in the development of the region because I mean this is also beyond our our knowledge as a, as a company um, uh, to take the full. Um, the, I mean the full care of the project. So we also um, have in put in the NGO or the, um, uh, the civil society sector to support in uh, um, in, um, in capacity building and etc. So next slide, we're going to go very quickly through this. Yeah, next. So we have the farmers uh, association. So we 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 formed farmers associa so association. And the farmers' role were really limited in the beginning of the years because, I mean, this is for them the first time ever to use, um, to use machinery. So they needed to be uh, um, supervised, they needed to be uh, trained. And, and, they, and, and the Yagub group have established, um, um, I mean, like a, a small working group that will support um, um, the operations of, of, of the project completely with the farmers. And we hope in four or five years time, they would be able to, to, uh, to take it off by themselves completely. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the state group has been the facilitator of the financial process. Uh, I mean, talking to the banks and, uh, and try to convince them and, um, and I mean, getting the right financier. Uh, the provision of machinery for the first year and the year to come, so we, we will slowly draw out and, and leave it completely for them. And uh, finally, uh, the project management and uh, qualifications, because they need, of course, guidance uh, through the first stage. Next. Um, they need some guidance um, uh, through the first stages. And of course, the operation of the machineries uh, that goes by default in the begin in the area. And, and finally, what was most important to the farmer is the market. There was yeah, there was a market. So the farmers knows that whatever I plant, I will have a market. Like I would be able to sell it. So their the risk is really limited. 
So the, the role of the financier, which in our case was the bank, and, um, and I think that was the first time in uh, ever that we mobilized microfinance uh, fund uh, to really support these farmers. Many banks are really not uh, um, confident enough to, to give uh, microfinance money out. But uh, here the Agup group have served as a grantier to the project, and so they were very at ease to, uh, to give as many farmers as possible the fund. And so it was not for, um, for the Agup group, it was, had not been so easy. Um, in the future, we also uh, are going to be working with donors because there are a lot of agencies that are willing to, uh, to support the farmers through their different association and the donors here will act as uh, a financier. We have also worked with the uh, government uh, institutions um, um, such as the State Ministry of Agriculture and they were quite supportive. Um, but also through our, with them we also have um, uh, many uh, CSR projects in deforestation, um, 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 planting of uh, different crops in order to, to make, uh, um, I mean, use of the water and, and, and the land. And also they, with the High Commission for Environment in ISAR 4, we're working to see how we could mobilize human and animal waste into natural fertilizer. So this is another project that we are doing uh, towards the efforts uh, for that. So as you can see, the next, yeah, here, um, the project uh, it's intending to uh, to uh, to cover a land of uh, um, uh, fifty-seven thousand acres by uh, by by five-year time, and we want to take gradually the farmers. Um, um, uh, we want to take uh, the gradually the farmers into um, completely being dependent uh, in, in, in that area. Uh, and each year, so we are raising more awareness. It's also a challenge for us to start all um, at once. So a year by year, um, till we reach the, 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 uh, the targeted land size. And we are intending to, by the five year, to have worked with 1,800 um, farmers. Um, already mentioned that. Next, yeah. And then, so this project has been quite a success uh, for us. Uh, we um, personally very delighted to have done then the impact uh, uh, just slightly after this season, and uh, how the farmers and the community, like almost everyone in the community, knew about the project. Uh, they're very eager. They're really happy to because they finally fi found someone who really believe in them could be a were able to get them the finance and there was a marketplace. Um, and so for us was really important. And then we also saw back migration. You know, a lot of people not, were not in Darfur um, um, uh, in, in, in throughout the, uh, the previous years and many of them are going uh, back to agriculture because they have inherited land that they was not utilized, but now there is a great um, um, a motive for them to, to go back to, to, uh, to planting. Um, and so we believe after this model, it might be um, we want to combine uh, the, the meat product, or I mean the cattle, uh, because we're working in the same area. Um, we're working in the same area and it's equally rich and so we hope through an Nakhil uh, when it starts next year, we will have a marketplace for the farmers and we would intend to also work um, with, uh, with um, cattle bearers because, I mean, farmers, um, many of the farmers that also um, um, are breeding cat um, cattle bearers. So uh, we hope by, again, two years from now, not five, we'll be able to come to present uh, the... Uh, uh, the meat uh, project instead of the peanut project. Um, but I also wanted to mention it was also for us very important um, that we motivate uh, other businesses to operate in the same area and in the same field as possible because there is huge unutilized land, there is huge opportunity in the region, not necessarily in peanut sector particularly, but all the all, all the agriculture sector 
uh, all the livestock sector. It's, um, there are huge opportunity and we were able to make it in less than two years. Uh, therefore, it's now very attractive and we by here invite other companies, uh, other partner who are willing to, um, to hit that area of, uh, of the country. We will be very delighted and happy to see um, our first footstep have brought uh, by so many other behind us because these people really deserve it and, um, and, and they have been providing us with the majority of the wealth in this land. Thank you very much. Please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.